Hello everyone and welcome to Power Playground. This is your host Michael and today I'm going to be doing a slightly different video than usual. This is going to be focusing on different tools that are handy when doing DIY projects, 3D printing, all sorts of different things. Now you could call this like a tool review but I'm going to also be going in depth and explain why these tools are best at their particular jobs. And of course, just go over different like budget tiers and what have you. Now this first video is going to be about digital calipers. Now you could also consider these to be veneer calipers, but they um, essentially what they do is they finely measure things within like a, these little teeth here. Essentially what you have here is a, bit of a digital readout that is on a slide. If I press the power button, you get a, a super duper accurate measurement. And this one goes up to about 154-ish. Technically, it's only supposed to go to about 150. At least that's what it's rated for, but you can go a little higher. It just not 100% not recommended here. Now there are different tiers of these digital veneer calipers. Uh, this one is the highest tier. This is the Mitutoyo uh, Absolute Digimatic. And let's see, here. let's get the model number there. So we have a CD 6 inch ASX. Probably, there are many different, pretty different versions here, but this one is the most common of the Mitutoyo brands. Uh, the, these are pretty pricey. They can range anywhere from like 150 to like $180 US. You can also get an NIST certified one that's a heck of a lot more expensive that uh, they that a actual shop certifies to make sure it's pretty accurate. Now this one is so accurate that right now it's not measuring at zero because there's actual like dust or oil between these contacts. So what I'll do is I'll uh, take my shirt here, get in frame. You gotta, you gotta clean the surfaces and you get a zero reading here. Now, not all calipers are created equally here. So now we have the mid-ranger. This is one of my favorite calipers to recommend to people. Obviously, if you're like me and you do a lot of uh, accurate measurements, especially for a living, you definitely want something that's, uh, that's reliable and gives you repeatable data. Now with the Origin Cal, it's very similar in terms of quality to the Mitch Toyo, but it's not as refined. These guys you can pick up for anywhere, usually they're about 40 to 60 US dollars on Amazon. And uh, I highly recommend them if you're looking to just up your game a little bit from like the cheapo, like Harbor Freight or Chinese style calipers. Since they're not too insane of a jump in price, it's just a very good upgrade path to get something like this. You get a pretty nice finish. Uh, the actual slide is pretty similar to the Mitutoyos. Also, you get pretty repeatable data, so I can measure the diameter of this battery. And then you're usually going to get a pretty similar measurement. Of course, the outer uh, layer of this particular battery is a little bit pliable, so it's going to give you a slightly different by like the 0.2 or so millimeter. And of course that is the tolerance of most calipers is 0 0.02 millimeters. So that's to be expected, but it's not an insanely huge deal. Now the Mitch Toyos, of course, they're going to be a little bit more superior in terms of repeatability. So you got these guys here. And of course, as you can see, there's also that, there's also a bounce factor. So it may take a little bit for it to get to its proper figure. As you can see, the Mitch Toyo is super, super quick in this aspect. And it's very, the numbers are a lot more repeatable, but these origin cows from uh, eye gauging are pretty close to the Mitch Toyos, but not exact as you can see. Now they do have the same Pretty similar interfaces here. It looks almost like eye gauging copied off of Mitch Toyo's uh, main interface here at least. Now another cool thing about some calipers is they have the ability to show fractions. These two don't and the this one I have in the case here, the Harbor Freight one does not as well, but some do which is kind of neat. And of course you can do millimeter and inches which is always, uh, you know, you can go a thousands inch or just millimeters. 
that's useful depending on what pr kind of project you're working on here. Now, speaking of repeatability, let's go ahead and move on to the cheapest caliper here, which will be re representative of Chinese Harbor Freight calipers since they're usually all about this very similar in fit and finish. Now, this one is, isn't a Harbor Freight one, but it's very similar in performance. Uh, it does, well, this one doesn't even have any battery power, unfortunately. This one, that, now that's another problem with these cheaper ones is they love to drain battery. So this guy, I don't know why, what it is, but every single time I go to use it, I have to replace the battery, which, uh, one second, let me see if I have a spare battery handy. We are in luck today, folks. Got a spare battery right here. So a lot of these take the same battery, like an LR44, just a standard like coin cell battery. Uh, this particular one from eye gauging, which is like the mid tier takes like a very one of those flatter coin cell batteries And then the Mitch Toyo I think it just takes an LR44 standard But I have never had to replace this guy before up oh, there. We go. It's starting to work now I just need to find a way to Permanently affix it. Oh crap. The cover just went missing. Oh, it's right behind the actual caliper. Okay cool beans. So there we go and yeah, as you can see, don't know how that happened, but yeah, it's not exactly measuring zero. Now you can press the zero button, zero it in. Now I believe this one, there's a bit of a fatal flaw where you have to zero it each time and it doesn't remember it when it powers off. So the Mitsutoyo and the eye gauging Oregon cows, these are far superior to the El Cheapo ones. Now, a lot of the cheap calipers are pretty similar. This one is actually like one of the crappiest ones, but I wanted a 12 inch caliper just for like odd measurements and things if I needed to make a large measurement that above like the normal six inches. I uh, just wanted something that was affordable that I wouldn't use too often that could give me a ballpark measurement. Okay, now another thing to check with these digital calipers is basically repeatability and accuracy. Now, for instance, let's start with the Mitch Toyo. I'm gonna measure this hard piece of plastic. Also, keep in mind if you are measuring stuff that flexes a bit, it may change quite a bit. So for instance, this part right here is, you can't really notice it, but it is flexible. Like I can squeeze down on it and give it a few extra millimeters, but this part is a little harder just because it contacts with like the camera or the light setup. So 16.68, 16.66, or 68, there we go. Sometimes you just gotta kinda double over on it. You always wanna make sure. And 16.59, 16.64. Okay, so 16.66. And then of course, back to the Mitch Toyo. All right. Sometimes with these cheap calipers, you don't always get the most repeatable information. And it's just something that can bite you, especially if you're like doing really accurate, just trying to do really accurate measurements, for instance, with 3D printing or trying to find tolerances on a 3D printer, uh, diagnosing accuracy or tolerance issues. Uh, these cheaper calipers can bite you in the rear when it comes to that. So not always 100% repeatable like it. So basically, if you notice, if I zero it out, it take it kind of has like a bounce to it. A lot of cheap calipers do that. For instance, if you notice, there's no real bounce. Sometimes there's a little bit, but it's very rare that you'll get one on a high scale grade caliper like the Mitoyo. This one, I might have got some. Go clean that off real quick. There we go. Also, another thing you can notice is there's like a, or at least I can notice, you can probably hear, you might be able to hear that. There's definitely a bit of flex on those. Now at the Mitz Toyos, there's like next to nothing on there. They flex a little bit just because material's gonna give, but doesn't really invalidate the measurements. But these, yeah, as you can see, it just has a hard, really hard time finding zero. And these are pretty, and of course, eye gaugings are pretty solid too. Now I will say that if you're starting out 
And if you just want a very simple tool and you're not too worried about like 0 0.0, like one millimeter accuracy or 0 0.02 millimeter accuracy, which a lot of these guys are rated for, uh, I would say just go with a cheap pair, especially if you're just getting into like 3D printing or 3D modeling and you just want to start you just want to start basic and you don't want to dump a bunch of money into all your tools. Yeah, a cheap pair of calipers is fine. It's also good for just a little throwaway or what have you there. A cheap set of calipers isn't always the worst choice. They still get the job done, but for any sort of precision work, you usually want to go upscale a bit. Now these guys, they're, the eye gaugings are pretty cheap. They can be found for anywhere between $40 to $60 US. I'll put a link in the description for all of these calipers. Now the Metatoyos, like I said, they're a lot more expensive, but if you're working with these every day and you want fat repeatable measurements and you want something that's going to last you a while, these are also pretty durable too. I've dropped these a couple of times or a few times and they haven't failed me yet. But the eye gauging definitely is a good mid choice. I recommend a lot of people get them if they really want to get serious into this stuff. Honestly, I use both of these relatively regularly. These I don't use as often. These I use pretty often, but I do keep the this one inside of my laptop bag. So if I'm on the go and I need to take some measurements, I'll use these just because A, um, someone steals my bag. I don't need to worry about having my expensive tool in there. And then B, if um, it, I chuck my laptop bag around, it gets thrown around a fair bit. If um, something does break, I don't, I'm not out like 150 to $200 for a set of Mitch Toyos. So always just a good little pair to put around on the go and get some, get some pretty decent accurately measurements. These ones are rated, let's see, I'll have to check the spec sheets here. I'll, I'll put the specs on the screen. I know for sure these cheapo, like Chinese calipers, they are usually rated for about 0 0.2 millimeter accuracy, plus or minus. So of course that can vary wildly, as you can see right off the hop, it's not registered, it's technically it's registering zero, but it's just 0 0.02 millimeters off. So it could go either way. So that that's quite a bit of accuracy jump. The Mitch Toyos, I think it's point, they're, pretty dead nuts accurate. I really haven't had any issues with balance on it, of course, and they um, just haven't really had any sort of tolerance discrepancies that I can really notice. And of course the repeatability is spot on. Same with the eye gauging. Sometimes you may get like a little bit off and some calipers, which I don't know where my particular pair is, but I do have a pair that does fractional inches as well but um, I just don't know where those where that particular pair is. So usually I'd have that just because it's a good stand and it's representative like the ones you get at Harbor Freight and they're pretty um, standard for the Chinese fair calipers you'll find at any on Amazon or any sort of you know Harbor Freight type retail stores. But this one was just a good stand in. It's a little, actually it performs a little worse than the Harbor Freight ones because just because of the battery life alone uh, like I said, if I leave this battery in here, which I'm gonna go ahead and uh, yank this out until I use it next. That's gonna be about it for today's video here, folks. Like I said, all these calipers, they will be in the description if you want to pick up your own pair. If you have any questions, put them in the comments or comment away. And if you like the video, go ahead and hit that like button, consider subscribing and have a great day.